Hey, Jeff Luff here today from Alternative Heating and Supplies. I'm going to be talking about how to install an outdoor wood boiler to an indoor boiler properly. There's going to be two chapters in this video. There's going to be a chapter one of how to do the install, and then there's going to be a chapter two of the problems that I see with improperly installed plate exchangers and improperly installs on indoor boilers. So if you're having problems, go to right immediately to chapter two and then come back to chapter one. But for now, we're gonna be talking about how to do an install correctly on an indoor wood boiler. It's really incredibly simple. Uh, just about everything in this industry and the application is the, the theory that I go off of is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. No offense for anything that wasn't meant <laughs> to offend anybody, but it's just the best theory to do. So when you have an outdoor wood boiler, and excuse my drawings, the outdoor wood boiler needs to be connected to the indoor boiler so it works seamlessly with the indoor boiler. And it is, again, so elementary. So what you're going to do is the outdoor wood boiler is going to send water from the outdoor wood boiler to a plate exchanger um, that is going to be inside next to the boiler. Okay. Now the reason why we need a plate exchanger is the outdoor wood boilers are usually under no pressure at all. They're open to the atmosphere, they have a fill point, and they have no pressure. The boilers inside are generally, generally uh, pressurized systems and they're running around 15 to 20 psi. So we need to separate two, those two water systems based on that. And people are going to ask, why do I need to separate, I, why can't I plumb it in? Some manufacturers actually say you can do it. There's a lot of safety systems that are installed on the indoor boilers. There's expansion tanks, autofill valves, and all the safety systems because when the boiler runs and it doesn't have enough water, it turns to steam. And when you have steam and heat, something's got to expand, something's got to give. And technically, if you don't have enough water, you can actually make a bomb out of a boiler. That's why they have the autofill valves, the pressure relief valves, and all the things that uh, accommodate that pressurized system. So that's why you should. It's very important and I highly recommend that you do install a plate exchanger between these two water systems. So from the outside boiler, you're gonna come into the plate exchanger and then out of the plate exchanger and return back to the wood stove. Basically, it's just that simple. Now, on the plate exchanger, which is uh, drawn here, I have the water coming in here to the bottom port and the, the plate exchangers, are basically split this way. So the wood furnace is gonna come in here and it's gonna come out here, that's the one zone. Then the boiler, where I'm gonna show you, it comes in here and out here. Now the plate exchangers are five by 12. Uh, one inch ports are usually what's commonly used. Uh, a lot of people say, well, the one inch port's gonna choke me down. And I understand that too. You can find inch and quarter plate exchangers. I do not have them myself, uh, but I, they are up on the internet and I honestly believe they're not that important. Uh, and I'll go through that a little bit here in a minute. So anyways, hooking up your plate exchanger. Now, a lot of people say, well, where are you gonna hook it up in between your supply and return? That is absolutely the worst thing you could do. You never wanna touch the supply side of a boiler because whoever installed your boiler designed it to circulate water through its zones or its hot air systems or its tanks, uh, domestic hot water tanks, uh, boiler mates and things like that. So you don't wanna ever touch the supply side. Okay, now the pumps, if they're on the supply or the return for the zone, it's absolutely irrelevant also. It's, it's not important for us to need to know that. So, the absolute best place to install a plate exchanger hooking up to a wood boiler in that situation is you're gonna break the return side only. So in this case, the return side is gonna come in right here. You're gonna break this off. and you're gonna send the water through the plate exchanger that way. Now, I'll go through how simple this is. So the indoor boiler is running roughly at about 175 degrees. The water comes out of its supply side. It's gonna go, in this case, I drew a three zone system. It could be five, it could be two, it could be one. Doesn't matter, again, it's irrelevant. So it's gonna go through and it's gonna come back on this zone at 155. The middle zone is about 145 and the outside zone is about 152 because it's dropping heat as it's going through the zone heating your home. 
So if you take these two and you average 152, 155, 145, you get to 452. You add them up together and you're going to divide by three, which is the amount of zones that we have, and you're going to get an average temperature of 150 degrees. So the water is going to be coming back here at 150 degrees and then coming into this plate exchanger. Now the wood boilers are generally running at about 180 degrees. The water coming back is about 150. And you're going to lose about 20 degrees when it's trying to heat. So this is going to be about 160. So in aspects, you got a delta T of 130 or 30 degrees. That is a large enough delta T to have a good heat exchange rapidly. So the water that's going to be coming out of this plate exchanger is going to be in the ballpark of about 175. Right back to where we left off. That's exactly what we want. That means the inner core boiler of this temperature is going to remain at 175 degrees. And that's okay. That's what exactly what a boiler should be running at or 180 but most of the outdoor boilers are running at 80. You're gonna lose five or six degrees in the swap of a plate exchanger. So 175 is still heating well, and that's just fine. So now it's going back out again, doing it and recirculating again. Now people will say, well, how does it do it? How does it know to circulate? Well, the zones are calling for heat. So when the circuit or the thermostat on the wall calls for heat in that zone, it's gonna turn on the pump dedicated to that zone and circulate it. So if only one zone is circulating, the water is going to come back in this case at 155 and only heating up at that speed, which is usually eight to six gallons a minute per zone is what the flow is per zone is six GPM per zone. So the most you could get out of this, if all three zones in this case are running is 18 gallons per minute flow. These plate exchangers with a one inch port can handle up to 31. So that's why I don't see much reason of going to the inch and quarter ports. Yes, you're necking down the, the throttle of this manifold here, but it doesn't usually matter unless you're running multiple zones. In the case, the multiplier is six because that's usually what gallon per minute flow per zone is needed. So that's how it's generally done. Now, in the chapter two, I'm gonna go through with a lot of the problems that happen. Now, people say, well, how does it work? Now, the boiler has its own um, aquastat built in and that's usually set to 180 as a high and a low of like 170. Basically it's a simple little aquastat like this. The aquastats that are mounted on the indoor boilers are usually a little bit more square than the rectangle here but they're fundamentally the same. They have a little probe that monitors the temperature of the inside of the boiler and they have a little gauge which tells you the temperature um, that you would want it set at at the high limit referring to 180 in this case. And then inside there's a little paddle where it'll allow you a 10 degree differential. So what you're gonna do is on the boiler inside, you're gonna turn down the boiler to roughly, let's say 160. Turn on at 150. Now if the wood boiler is doing his job, this boiler will never drop into those ranges. So this boiler's ignition system and heating system is oil, propane, gas, is never going to ignite. So because the boiler is always in a temperature of about 175, which we already determined if the wood furnace is running and everything is doing its job. But if the wood burner goes out and run out of heat or wood or whatever's going on, this system will slowly drop off and as 160 will tell this unit to fire its oil and the boiler will start to heat and then start heating the house that way. Yes, losing a couple degrees in the zone is gonna make the zones run longer. So if it was normally running at 175, the zone, let's say, would hypothetically turn off for 20 minutes to get that room back up to its temperature that it wanted to. But when it's down to 160, 150, it's gonna take about 30 minutes, but it will get there, okay, just slower. So that's how you do that, and that's how you make it seamless. So basically, you're gonna set the indoor uh, boiler temperature lower than the outside boiler and its thing, and, you're gonna, and it's gonna maintain. And once the wood boiler runs out of wood, it'll seamlessly turn on this system and keep on going. And that's basically how simple it is. The only other things that you might wanna consider is during the spring and falls, when you get those warm days, these zones aren't firing at all. The boiler will cool down on its own. And since no heat is being swapped out from the plate exchanger from the wood boiler because nothing's circulating, the boiler core temperature will drop and the boiler system will turn on itself to keep its core at 160, 150. 
If that is a problem for you, there's another very simple solution. I'm just gonna cross this out. On the back of a boiler, indoor boiler, there's always a pressure relief valve, those safety systems I was talking about. You can simply unscrew that uh, pressure relief valve and put a T, put the pressure relief back on one side of the T and on the other side, you can run a small zone and you tap back in just above the plate exchanger. And in this case, you're gonna mount a simple aquastat, similar to, actually identical to this, that straps onto the pipe. And then you'll mount a small pump. This most of the time is not necessary. So what will happen is if this spring in the fall when no heat's being circulated through the zones, the core temperature will turn on instead of the boiler turning on its oil or its uh, fuel source, it will sense that with the aquastat that the core boiler is cooling down. It'll tell the circulator to turn on. It'll circulate through that plate exchanger, getting the heat back up, going back in here, heating up the core without turning on its fuel system. And if you want to use the wood. This is an option. You don't have to do this at the same time as you're installing your plate. Try out just the plate, and if this starts to bother you on those warmer days when you start to hear that wood furnace, or that oil fire furnace turn on every blue moon, and that's bothering you, which it eventually will, I assure you, um, then address it. But if it doesn't bother you, leave it alone. It's simple, easy, just the way it is here. Now I'm going to go into chapter two and give you the reasons and the problems of not installing it this way and the things that might will happen or the people who are having troubles understanding or not understanding why their boilers, indoor boilers are not keeping up and they used to years ago. Thank you and I'll see you shortly. Give me some thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know how I'm doing and if you want any other information or any other videos, please text us, go on our Facebook page, it'll be posted below, and uh, let us know. We like to do these videos to help people get through this process seamlessly and easily. Thank you.